Yeah. Yeah, treat yourself. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hit the stop button really quick. You get it. Stop button. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How you guys doing today? Good. 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 Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 So I don't know if you guys know, we did this last year. Uh, we showed you guys how to hunt and do all that stuff with anime and video games. But there's a lot of stuff that's changed over a year that we'll, we'll address in this. But for people who don't know. This is Boxer Chan right here. Hello. I I run an anime business called Boxer Chan. I make personalized boxes where pretty much you tell me what you like, and then I fill a box with anime Blu-rays and DVDs and extra stuff, just like what I'm giving out here. Uh, I'll cater to your taste. You can check it out at www.bakuchan.com. And through working through that, uh, I've learned a lot about the anime business in general. And I always say, make sure to check out YouTube. If you don't believe any words we're saying, go to YouTube, type in Boxer Jam. There's probably about over a hundred different videos from different people who've gotten boxes. I have very nice patrons, I thank them. Very much. It's very nice, overwhelming, positive review, people love them. But I am Joe Schmo, you can find me on YouTube. I do stuff on Twitch, not right now, because some of the stupid stuff with the website, but I do things on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. Boo! Anyway, I do a lot of stuff on YouTube. I do stuff on Twitch. Uh, I am a video game collector myself. I have over a thousand pieces physical. Is that fun? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I have over a thousand pieces physically in my collection. That's just games, not including the 20 plus systems I also have in my collection. So I've seen fakes, I've seen reels. I've seen a lot of, you know, good prices, I've seen overpriced. So, and I also do video game hunting videos, which I'm recording here, which Sunday I'm hopefully hoping there's a bunch of people out here selling video games trying to recoup some losses from this weekend because I see a lot of people dropping a hundred plus dollars per item out there. So yes, hopefully we'll see them this weekend. <laughs> but I've been collecting seriously since 2018. So that means going to thrift stores, going to a bunch of different places, which I'll cover. And he started his business back in 2018. Yeah, I'll tag on to this. Uh, same, pretty much same thing with him. I've collected for a very long time. Uh, I've collected anime seriously for uh, almost a decade now. Um, and I think that 500 number is like, honestly, a very low ball number. It's probably closer to 1K now. Um, a lot. <laughs> we, we have a lot of physical media. Yeah, and especially over the last year, a lot of things have changed from the anime world and the video game world. So, when COVID hit back in 2020, I'm sure a lot of you as video game collectors realized, hmm, this game that was, you know, people couldn't get rid of, Wii Sports is a perfect example. No one could get rid of it. No one wanted it, so they threw them out. All of a sudden, post-pandemic, 2020, about June, July, August, everyone was paying $20, $30 a disc for something no one can get rid of. The video game market has skyrocketed. So old PS1, NES, SNES, games that people would, didn't want, grandmas were selling for 25 cents. All of a sudden, now there's a good example, Super Mario RPG, just got a remake on Switch. The original one, it's down to like 80 bucks. It's going for $100, just a cartridge alone. Wasn't like that pre-COVID. So, everything post-COVID, everything skyrocketed. There we go. Oh, look down, pay attention. So, the other problem that's happened post-COVID, which a lot of you guys probably have experienced, is scalpers. People getting bots, auto-buying up new games or collector's editions like Tears of the Kingdom, for example, for the newer people, or Fire Emblem Three Houses, that they bought up a bunch of that stuff, selling stuff like crazy. But they'll sell it to you, let's say that brand of Joe Blow over here. They wanted to get them on, on release day for $110. You go find it the next day for $220 or $330 because they're scalping it up and raising it because they realize, oh, if we buy them all up, we can just make a market. So that's been a big problem for the video game market. And there's other markets like I don't know if you guys know about the pink Stanley Cup that was recently released from Target. So, almost fell over myself. <laughs> so, 
we're going to cover a bunch of things we you need to look out for from seeing repros or fakes to where to go for where to get a good price or try to at least and i'll discuss that but Okay, thank you. There's a bunch of places out there you can look for it cheaply. One of the places that I really liked before um, people found out about it was Goodwill Auctions. I could find consoles, things like 3DOs and stuff like that, older consoles that are hard to find. I could get, get them at an auction for $100. Works perfectly fine. Nowadays, it depends on what time you can get, but you can still get good deals. I see all the time there are lots of like, 300 plus PS3 games, or same for Wii games, stuff like big lots that go for sales that if even if you're reselling, you can still probably profit it as long as you, you know, get in there on the right time. I want to add to this. Our Google Auctions started like, what, like six, seven years ago? It's the online version of Goodwill. Um, if you've been to Goodwills lately, uh, and just their general thrift stores, you'll probably see that they don't have anything. <laughs> um, Goodwill Auctions is probably the reason why. Uh, those places have kind of dried up. Um, we will discuss other places that can be looked at, but um, yeah, the Goodwill physically is kind of a good place to look for stuff that is scalped heavily. Now, I'll add on to that, 90% of them are. There are still some, if you go and we'll cover some YouTubers, we you see like Retro Rig or Phoenix, P, uh, Phoenix Resale, go out there and they'll hit up a Goodwill once in a while, they'll luckily find some stuff. But most of the time, if you find something out of Goodwill, it's a Madden, or it's like the, what is it, the, the PS3 one that required the motion move. I can't remember, the archery, the one that's like the person with the archery. Oh, eye toys. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. For stuff like that. But once in a while, you'll find some stuff. But 90 to 95% of the time, you're not going to find anything. Or if you do, it's going to be, you know, Maddens or stuff like that. Which, there are some Maddens that are worth money. Uh, one of the ones I like to bring up is the one for the Susan G. Coleman. It's a very expensive Madden version that goes for like a couple hundred dollars, even though it's like a Madden 14 or something like that. So there are variants, but needless to say, most of the time you'll find just regular sports games. So Facebook Marketplace. There are still some people out there that don't know what they have. There are people out there that think they know what they have and they'll charge $30 for an NFL 99 N64 cartridge. Those people exist and if anyone down here has ever been on Facebook Marketplace, you've seen it. There are still plenty of deals to find. So, I'd say keep an eye on that. Yard sales and flea markets are still one of the best places I get stuff. I picked up plenty of like Switch games for a couple dollars here and there. I picked up GameCube games for a couple dollars here and there. The problem with that, as things go on, people think they know what they have. Sometimes giving them a reality check, hey, this, you know, NFL 99 or um, my favorite one, I have a story. It was NFL 02, it was like Madden 02 on the GameCube. Um, guy at the flea market was like, yeah, I know what I have, this is going to be $20. For a GameCube game, for a common sports game, that's like five, six dollars at that. I showed him the price things, his face dropped. He was very uh, upset, to say the least. But with that, all his other products have dropped. I was able to get Super Mario Sunshine for like $35, which is nice. I was able to get Rugrats on the 64 for like 10 bucks or so. There's a couple other things, but sometimes given a reality check might help a little bit. And then, of course, thrift stores, just kind of goodwill. You never know what's going to come in, especially in the South. There's a lot of Christian thrift stores, and a lot of people want to help. So they'll donate the collections their grandkids never used or stuff like that. There's plenty of stories of people going to random thrift stores, especially in like the Raleigh area. Them finding NES collections, like full on NES collections with top loaders. A lot of different cool things you would never really expect to find. They just find it at the local Goodwill or the local thrift store, so. All right, question for a giveaway. What is the most expensive NES cartridge that's listed on eBay. Already see a hand up. No. Get rid of that nigga. <laughs> Sit the X. I know you guys know. <laughs> Is it the combo Mario Duck No, it's not. No, it's got rare. I'll give a hint. It's kind of like a um, competitive cartridge. You got an idea? No. 
Alright. Go ahead and hit the next one because you got it, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Alright. It is the World Championship Gold Cartridge. It was graded at a 5.0. They have it listed at $2 million. Uh, the championship, you, you might have seen the Nintendo World Championships. One of the most recent ones back in 2011, 2012, if you guys know Aaron of Game Grumps, he was on it, he did, he participated in it. But yeah, they had that listed on eBay at like $2 million. And as far as I know, no one's bought it. So I don't know if that list changed today, but as far as I know, no one's bought it. All right, this one should be a little bit easier. I need some ways to spot a fake game. All right, so you're being first. This is called Warner's Incorrect Logo, or in the, uh, like, you could just do the Incorrect Cartridge as well. Yep. All right, go ahead and do it. You can come up here. There's a couple prizes for you. Right. Uh, some of the easier ways, like they said, misspelled. Um, you can even tell by Jeez, how glossy it? some things are. Sometimes there's basically, there's some stuff stuck together that shouldn't be. You can tell that someone's been in there redoing all it. It's very obvious. It's not that long. Uh, you can see that there's certain things that were never reproduced onto a certain cartridge or a certain system. That's another giveaway. Uh, missing embossing, cheap labels, feel from the cartridge. If it feels crappy or like you can go down to the 99 cent store and probably find it, it's another giveaway. But there's a lot of things that give away cheap cartridges. And when it comes to expensive like NES cartridges, I'm not sure if I have it listed. No. With NES cartridges, another good way. So there's a couple expensive ones like Bong and stuff like that. I always say carry a small little screwdriver to open it up because opening the insides is the easiest way to see if it's fake or not. Because they'll have new batteries and stuff like that, or it will just be obviously completely fake on the inside. So there are a lot of people that want to try and make it a living. There's plenty of YouTubers that have proved that you can do it. Whether and then and I know some of them people don't agree with, but there are good examples of how to run a business. There are there's Chase Apple Rice Price who started who was doing it since he was like seven, and he's about 27, 28. He has a full bar and he has four or five people working for him. He's buying up like collections all the time. Phoenix Resale, he lost his job at a pawn store like four times in a row. He was able to actually do a reselling business and he's now fully figured out what he wants to do. He made about a million dollars or something last year. It's possible. Arkansas Picker, he's a, he's a smaller YouTuber. He's a, some guy out in Arkansas. He goes out to flea markets, goes out to yard sales, flips games, does the whole thing. He shows you how he does it, tells you the prices he pays, so on and so forth. And then Retro Rick, who just bought a game store because all this stuff he's been flipping. He had enough money and equity to go and buy this game store. He still goes out, hunts for himself, and he still goes collects. But he also shows what he does for the business, what he pays, what they're doing, so on and so forth. There are plenty of people out there, if you want to do this as a full-time thing, they can show you how to do it. And one of the best things you can do, if you want to get started, yard sales, takes Goodwills to even GameStop. Because GameStop, especially around the holidays, Black Friday, they have some deals when they try to clean stuff out. Four for 40 is a good example. You can get games that are worth 15, 20 bucks. Buy four of them, pay them $40. You can double your profits if you, that's one way to do it, but there's plenty of people that explain it way better than I do. If you want to make it a full-time gig, there's plenty of people out there. But I believe that's, oh yeah, I got one more slide, my bad. When it comes to fakes, like I said, opening up, opening the guts. That's one of the best ways to do it. With Pokemon, tell me, does anyone know any good way to explain Pokemon? Sometimes the Pokemon have the little number inside, like on the front, and then the inside it has the Nintendo yep. uh, logo. They have serial numbers and fake cartridges. Mm -hmm. There, there's one easy, big way to identify it for like Pokemon Emerald, which I think is the most expo expensive Pokemon game by itself. If you flip it around back, there's gonna be a little square in the top left corner. It's like four, I, I think they're batteries or something like that. It's a squadron, it's like a rectangle. It's divided into fours. 
It's the easiest way to tell if Game Boy Advance cartridges are real because they have that always there. It's one of the easiest ways. But then, like you were saying, and like you were saying, with the numbers, with the labels, everything like that, there's also tell times or tell tell signs of that. You can flip into the light. There, there's a lot of things, but I wanted to bring that one up because that's the most reproduced game. Now, like I said before, in here, you can tell by the coloring, you can tell by the feel of the cartridge, if it feels really cheap. If it just looks wrong, it's most likely wrong. And then with NES, a lot of good ways to identify it is how many screws. There's a lot of three screw variants, some five. If it's supposed to be a five screw variant and it's supposed to be expensive and only has one screw, one of the biggest signs. All right, so some of these up here are kind of obvious. I don't think, what is this? that's Mario 64, right? Super Mario 64 on yeah. the Genesis. I don't think Super Mario 64 ever came out on the Genesis, and I don't think Super Mario World ever came out on the Genesis. But there's people out there on Facebook Marketplace selling it for what, $35, $40? Yeah, and I don't think that's a thing you should buy or try to sell or add to your collection personally. And then like I said with the Pokemon, I also like the little censoring so you can't really tell it's Pokemon, just a little sensor in the middle. With Emerald, it's super dark. Emerald's not that dark. Fire Red, super dark. Ruby, super dark. Everything's super dark. That's one of the easiest telltale signs. Now, people do sell these. If you don't want to buy the real one, there are people selling repos for like $30. If you don't want to pay $150 to $200 for Pokemon Emerald, I don't blame you if you buy a repro. Just don't try to turn it around and try and sell it for $200. One quick about that I want to add, the batteries in those cards suck. Uh, they're very commonly um, really bad, and your saves will usually go away very quickly. Unlike, so if you do get a cart like that, obviously don't sell it, but you should probably replace it with a watch battery that you trust. Now, there are good game stores out there. Some I've come across. Double Jump Video Games up in Vancouver, Washington. They replace all the batteries in the Pokemon games. So they put fresh, brand new batteries in there, never have to worry about it. Same for the video game cavern in Spartanburg, South Carolina. They replace all the batteries. And they go in there and they do the same with consoles and stuff, anything that needs changed and everything. Those two I have dealt with personally, never had problems. So if you're looking for an authentic one, those are places to go to find real ones. And then like I brought up before with Mother. So you see with, there's the original one. The main thing is there in the middle. It's not off center, it's not to left, right. It's right there in the middle, and then you see with the repros, there's different kind of variants and stuff like that. Best way to always check, to open it up. And I think that's it for me. Yep, that's it for me. Now we're going to go into the world of anime, which has a lot more can of worms than you would think. Thank you, Joe. Anyone like anime? Y'all like anime? That was pretty cool. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Anime! Yeah. All right, and a lot of you know also anime is kind of expensive. Um, <laughs> A very, very good example that I like to bring up always is that one time when I was younger at the flea market, there was a gentleman who was very angry and trying to sell his full collection of Seinfeld on DVD. I bet all of you in here have probably at least heard of Seinfeld. The guy at the flea market said, this is worthless. <laughs> because it is. Uh, Seinfeld was printed to the ground. You can probably buy the whole thing for like $10, sun bleach, somewhere in a flea market or a yard sale somewhere right now at the second. That's what most people think of when they say, when any of us say, hey, I collect anime. Oh, you collect physical media, DVDs? That's so outdated. Blu-rays? Who cares? Just go on streaming sites. Anime is a completely different beast, a whole market of it of itself. Nana is a very good example. While it's a little outdated because it got reprinted recently, by the way, if you have not seen Nana, go, go watch it now. Go watch it now. Um, this copy from, uh, I believe, not Shonen Jump, but uh, Shonen Beats? Shoujo Beats. Shoujo Beats? Uh, this, these copies were like $250 each. Um, Nana used to be about $1,000 to purchase in full. It was insane. 
Um, but to show the big difference between that, uh, we're going to talk about why this is happening. Why is there such a big difference between the market for something that's anime and something that's not? But first, let's start about how do you start collecting, right? Uh, it's if you just want to collect on the cheap, it is very doable, like we were talking about with the games. Bootlegs are easy to spot with a few tips. We'll go over them. Most people take care of their anime. Uh, I found so many collections that I was so worried, like, oh, I don't know, I don't know about this, maybe, you know, um, smoker stuff, you know, just general disarray. Nope. Uh, I don't know what y'all do, but y'all really take care of your anime. You really make sure this thing's safe for steam. Um, a lot of garage sales and estate sales will not know anything about anime. Uh, they'll be like, what, what even is this? Uh, they'll just throw it in with other... I mean, you guys have probably seen it before at a thrift store or something. You'll like be looking through movies and be like, oh, Garden State, uh, 300. Oh, the full series of JoJo or something like that. And it'll be like, all of them $5. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's... It's because they don't know what it is. Um, so making money off anime is a very reasonable thing to do. Let's talk about the stock market. So I'm just gonna ask this question, and if someone gets even remotely close, uh, you win a prize. Can someone tell me at the height, what was the record seven worth back in the day, the Bandai Entertainment release? Anyone have any guesses? That was actually really, uh, wait, 65, just 65? Yeah, 65, my guess. Go a little bit higher, good, a good bit, by, by a lot. <laughs> I won't say, but it's much higher than these numbers. Okay, I won't say good. 500 million? Well, well not, not, not that high. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? Oh man, I'd be rich. I'd be well. Five hundred dollars. Very close. Anyone else? Six hundred. That's it. That's it. You may pick a prize, sir. At its height, Eureka Seven was around six to seven hundred dollars. Um, this was back in like 2010. Uh, this was because, for multiple reasons, but the biggest reason was that Bandai Entertainment had gone under and all the shows they had were in licensing hell. And what I mean by that is that no other company had the right to print them. So these were the only copies you could get if you liked the Rec 7, it was on Toonami. Uh, so if you liked it, this was it. This is the only way to get it. And yeah, $600. Now, uh, Funimation got the rights to it like uh, about five years ago. You can get this for $7. $7 on rightstuff.com. Gambling, am I right? Uh, <laughs> I just, I just want to say, if you guys like, if, if you guys seen Gurren Logan, it kind of gives a little bit of that feel. It's about mechs. Yeah, they're there, but it's more about the people, what they experience, and everything. So if you like a little bit of mech with action, and then you know dealing with people, how what they're going through, how the world's developing, what the world's going through with some political stuff. Go pick it up. It's only seven dollars. Go, go pick it up. Yeah, I, I've been showing this show to my patrons recently. And I haven't seen it in a while, I'm like, wow, this show is even better than I remember. Holy cow, go watch Red 7 if you have not seen it. Now, things to look for when we want something with value. Special editions. That's a clear and easy one. I mean, that's pretty obvious. Just look for something that is, you know, low print run, you know, something that has good editions and stuff. They're definitely different varying of values of special editions for anime. You've probably definitely seen really bad special editions for anime, and some that are very good. Series that are about to lose their license or out of print. This is something you can actually go and look up. Um, all companies pretty much release a thing that say, we are about to lose the rights to these shows. Look it up. They, they publish these lists about, they're usually like half a year or yearly. See if one of your favorite shows is about to go out of print. It's something very worth looking for. And then something else I like to call vault anime. I truly believe, just like how Disney had a vault, if anyone remembers that, where they would like vault a movie for a little while and then uh, re-release it like a decade later. 
Uh, I truly believe anime companies do it. I don't have like concrete proof. This is this is very just me saying this, but um, I see Sentai do it. I see Funimation do it, where they'll have like a show that's like reaching like out of print levels. Like a good example is Made Sama. That was reaching like one hundred and fifty two dollars, two hundred dollars on Blu-ray. And then after a few years, Sentai was like, oh, we, we just have more copies of it. Thirty dollars on our site. <laughs> okay, Sentai. Yeah, so in the case of like Tokyo Pop too. Yes. Tokyo Pop went out of business, so they everything that they have is completely uh, you can't find it anywhere. Yes. Charles is the only place that I found so many. Yeah, no, there's there's a ton of really good examples of a lot of animators lost the time, and those things are worth money, are worth collecting. I see so many re-releases still of the dogs. They still wear it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nuts. It's yeah. nuts. If if you guys were here last time, this is some new additional information that I have. Um, these are just recent changes I've noticed in the past year. Um, first off, uh, Discotech and G Kids have just been picking up old stuff. Uh, G Kids got the rights to all of Shinkai's films. If anyone knows Makoto Shinkai, Your Name, Promise in Your Early Days, uh, Children Chase Lost Voices, Weather with You. Uh, they got the rights to their older stuff. Their, his older movies were like really expensive for a while, and then all of a sudden G Kids was like, hey, we got the rights to it on Blu-ray, it's upscale. Uh, and they are very affordable now. Um, Discotech has been getting animes all the way from the 1970s to 1990s. I gave some examples here, like Scribe, anyone remember Scribe? Like the one person? Yeah, yep, one person, that's what I expected. Love that show. Uh, stuff like Beyblade. I did want to bring up though, because I think it's important, uh, and this could be like its own whole panel, honestly. Uh, the way that these have been re-released into the new age is kind of interesting. Um, a lot of them are just not upscale at all. Uh, so you, you'll probably see this occasionally where it'll say, standard definition on Blu-ray, I just untouched exactly how it is, all the episodes are on there. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just something just to be note of, to see if that even changes the value of older stuff. Um, I've seen shows that get re-released on Blu-ray and standard editions, and it doesn't change the price of the older stuff at all. It's still rare, it's still collectible, it's still very expensive. Um, also, most have no special features, like no extras, no nothing, no interviews. It's, it's, you probably guys have seen it, the like, clear opening and clear closing special edition. That's not, that's not special features. Blu-ray people, that's no, we don't we don't care about that. We want like interviews and extra stuff. Um, the second thing I've been noticing is that Sentai is now dubbing and re-releasing a lot of their anime. I just want to bring this up. Waiting in the summer got three Blu-ray releases. I have no idea why. So the, the first one. Yeah, the first one is sub only. That is the the original with what the DVD release was. Then they got a dub of it in like 2018, and then 2023, in January, they re-released it. It's exactly the same, just different cover. No clue what the difference is. They I, if anyone knows, let me know. They have <laughs> an OBA, but I don't know if that's the reason why. Yes, they both have the, I checked. They, they're like, it's same voice actors, they both have the OBAs, they have the same special features, everything. Like, what in the world is the difference? But these are the major things I've been noticing in the market that's been changing. Um, these have changed some prices, but not, uh, we'll, we'll get to more and how that's affecting prices in a second. The casing too is deep. Yeah. It's cheaper. So, let's talk about a little about fake anime for a second. Um, as we talked about how to notice fake, <laughs> fake games, uh, fake anime is usually hilariously noticeable. Uh, I mean, they are, they're always like this. They always have the name of the show. It's usually in Romanji as well. Um, it'll be like volume 1 to 200 or something like that. And I have no idea why they use this formula on like every single copy, but that's literally how every anime would like look like. If it looks like this in any regard, it has a lot of words on it. Uh, the back is usually like English and Japanese and maybe simplified Chinese too. So it's like a bunch of different languages on it. There's no um, uh, company label, so like for instance, uh, you know, like Toradora. Toradora is owned by NIS. Uh, NIS is nowhere to be seen on that copy. So it is 
absolutely fake. Um, nothing against fakes, just don't, just don't sell them. Just, just don't sell them. I have found that some bootlegs are actually really fun and really neat looking, like as a physical form, but don't resell them for obvious reasons. And then uh, I do want to point out a really uh, nefarious fake is that there is a lot of fake brotherhoods out there. I don't know, I mean, Full Metal fans out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think I have that one. <laughs> brotherhood? I don't know what happened, but the market is riddled with bootleg versions of it. It's pretty much a carbon copy, unfortunately, uh, if you already opened it and stuff. But the major difference, if you see a brand new copy of any Funimation Blu-ray release, honestly, um, bootlegs will A, have a darker color, the ink will be bad. That's a really like commonality, that ink will just be much darker, much fader. Two, the plastic will be on the outside. Um, this might not necessarily mean that it's a fake, but it might, it will definitely mean that it's repackaged. All Funimation Blu-rays have the plastic wrap on the inside with the outer, um, the outer sleeve, cir uh, circling it. This is for, as far as I'm aware, every Funimation Blu-ray release. So just something to be on the lookout for. And then I wanted to also talk a little about um, figures because when I did this last year, people really asked me like, hey, how do you look for a fake anime figure? Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of things. Uh, I, I just wanted to show this this team. Look look at that picture for the team of figure. Like, Oh my goodness, <laughs> Kenshin back figures. If you don't don't buy this if you're starved for Kenshin back stuff. You should go to my figure collection uh, website. Yeah, the, my my figure collection is a great way to find information. Um, things to look out for if you if you're like worried about figure or not. Uh, logos, it just same as anime. Um, if there are not any logos on there, uh, there's a good chance it might be fake on the box. Um, if the box is gone and you just have the figure, uh, just look at the general quality of it, uh, especially specifically hair. Uh, fake figures just have worse hair. It's kind of hard to describe, but it's usually like matted and just not articulated as well. Um, it might look like just more plasticky. Um, same with joints. Joints are just not gonna be in good shape. Um, also faces, like, like, like you see on her right there, it's, it's just really ugly. It looks terrible. Um, and then like smell, I know this is weird, I know this sounds odd, but the smell of the plastic and the manufacturer ingredients that they use to make copy um, fake figures, it will, it will smell really bad, trust me. If you have, if you're not smelled like fresh manufactured fake figures, it is awful smell. Oh, what's up guys? So, so can you describe the difference between the smell? Like, yeah, okay, yeah, no, I'll, yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem, okay. So, <laughs> you ever smell like, it will smell like it's melting. I know that sounds weird, but take, yes. It's like, um, a good thing to try this out with is if you find, a, the, there's a lot of it now, um, cards, trading cards from China uh, that are like, they're not real, they're just for fun, collectible stuff. Those things smell exactly like how bad figures smell. Uh, they will be really strong ink. They will be just, it will, you'll, it will be repugnant. It will be really bad. It will be not like any normal figure, for sure. And also, uh, on all of this, you always check country manufacturer, country of origin. Yeah. It has like China on it. Yeah, country of origin, for sure. It, 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 not to be like, from China, just don't get it, but yeah. It'd be better not to. Yeah. So there's there's a couple markets that really specialize in fake figures. I hate to say that. Yeah. But a lot of the bigger um, titles. So like right now, I don't think there's any official Star Rail figures. There's, there might be there might be a couple, like a couple. But like majority, if there's a fake like character that you like that isn't really popular. Good chance there's a fake figure out for them. Same for fake Grand Order. There's a lot of fake figures out there. If you go to eBay, one of my favorites, I bought this as an example for some stuff I did. Kiyohime, um, so, the swimsuit, like the summer edition of her, she's a Lancer. There's so many fakes out there that you 
I could toss a rock and I probably hit a fake and the sea of real. And the thing is, they go for like a hundred dollars. The real speaker goes for three to four hundred. So that's another market that's saturated with fakes. And a lot of like MMOs, so like Epic Seven. There's I've seen fake a lot of fake figures for that. There's a lot of like phone games. There's plenty of fake figures. Genshin is like one of the best examples out there. There's a sure. lot. There's I a mean lot. a lot of fake figures for that. So. I, I, and I just want to point out, like, for figures especially, this is such a, like, weird situation for, like, bootlegs and stuff. Obviously, if you are selling it for the intention of, like, being fake, that's wrong. Period. But, like, there's just a lot of characters that don't have figures, you know? And if you see if someone that made a figure and it's clearly not real, you know, whatever. It's clearly not licensed, you know, go for it. Whatever. If you want to spend the money, go for it. But. These are just signs that you don't get ripped off. So you, if you in the end like want to be like, oh, I really have this rare figure, and, and then it turns out you don't, that sucks. Being scammed sucks. And these are just things to look out for and to be safe out there. Um, I did want to point out also that Amazon listing. Uh, if it, <laughs> I don't know why they do this, because it makes it super obvious, but any Amazon listings for figures that have like JK school uniform version, silver hair, cute girl, lowly statue, cartoon characters, rocks, toy model. That is not real. That is fake. Do not buy, do not buy those. I don't know why they all do it, but they do. Um, and then also, uh, the last thing also, just the box itself. Uh, the plastic that holds figures, I forget what they're called. Do you, know, do you know what that is? Does anyone know what that is? The plastic that actually holds the figure inside? That in of itself can look weird if you're getting a fake. Um, it can be commonly, so with fakes, and I've seen it too, I've, I've, I've had it happen to me. Um, it will be really heavily taped. Um, so like for real figures, it'll be like suctioned in, you know, they have to like do suction cups and like a little bit of tape. But like fake figures, it'll be like wrapped. Like it was like packaged that way, like really rough. Um, that's just kind of really suspect. Question. So, sorry. Um, so would you say that this is a fake one? Yeah, I'm say. All right. So he is asking Genshin Impact Barber one seventh figure uh, two hundred MiHoYo anime game character PVC gift. Yes. Um, the reason why I bring that up is just purely by its name. Um, for some same uh, these Amazon links for um, fakes of like words they use. Gift is a really common one. No figure manufacturer have I ever seen has used the word gift. That is like the like key word to get into like seller stuff for Amazon, and it, I would use caution for sure. I, I will say on that one that actually might just be a resale. Oh, that yeah, that's common. It's one. an official one seventh Barber figure from Hoyoverse. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that might be a resale, not necessarily a fake. Yeah, Amazon. Yeah, I would just I would just tread lightly on Amazon if they're using a lot of nomenclature that's like trying to get them into the system in some way. I would say yes, it's either a resale and it's real and you have to message them, or it is, it's, a gamble. It's, it's a gamble. So if I, after, if I go to a vendor say, and then like, does he damn it if it's a fake or not, do I just like, hey, got to figure out a box to look at it? Sure, and I'm just I'm like, <laughs> hey man, you gotta do what you do. But no, no, like real talk, like yeah, that's actually a really good example. What to do if you're, like, like here, any, any con and you're like, I don't know if that's a fake. How do I ask? Well, first, if you do ask and they get weird, it's probably, probably a fake. If they're like, ah, I don't want you really touching this box, either it's really expensive and it's real and they're just trying to be careful, or it's, 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 it's a fake. Because when I go to their store, right, the, the name of the store is called RCA Flapa, and they have all of the other figures from games. It's hilarious. Yeah, I, that's. That's, that's just how it is, it's wild. Um, but yeah, in that situation, uh, it's very fair to just say, hey, can I look at the box? And the best thing to look for, is there a logo on the box? Is there a logo anywhere? Um, just look up common uh, figure logos, uh, uh, for you, Sega Prize, um, there's a bunch of them. I would highly recommend just looking up those names so you're familiar with it. And also just, uh, my figure collection's a really common one. Um, before we go to the second one, I did want to talk about like how these things have affected the market and collectability. So like we were talking about, can you make money off of uh, collecting anime and anime figures? Yes, absolutely. Um, 
I mean, you see, you see people doing it here right now. Um, but can you do it with the low money you have? Uh, if you're saying like, oh, I only have like 20 bucks or whatever. Yes, absolutely. Um, I do highly recommend, like I was saying earlier, don't, just go out to your local uh, thrift stores. You would be very surprised at the amount of anime and anime merchandise that people just genuinely don't understand what it is. Yes, it's becoming much more popular in the 2020s, but it's it's still a lot of people are like, oh, man, I don't know what this is. Yeah, I just got to tell that before we move on. Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple brands. You, you know how the market is with pop figures. There are certain pop figures that pop off. So stuff like that. I would say that it would be about the same with anime figures yeah. too, right? Because there's a couple different kinds of figures. There's the prize figures that you can go to Japan and when it, the, the Korean games and stuff. There's the figmas, which are, you know, the, uh, like I guess the digestible joints and stuff like that. Then you got the collector's editions and so on and so forth. Some of them will definitely increase in value. I have seen that with figmas because they're kind of like limited prints. Oh, yeah. The same anime way. figures also like occur in value, especially like if, if you ever see like older anime figures pre-2000, th those things are expensive. <laughs> very expensive. <laughs> yeah, like very expensive. So one of the problems I'm personally having as a collector, I like an anime which probably no one in here outside the people that I talk to have heard of, is Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere. Oh, there's, it's a, so there, there's very few. But there are very legit ones. They go for three to four hundred, and every time I look at an eBay listing, they somehow increase by twenty dollars. I don't know why, but they do. There's a lot of series out there, especially the lesser known ones, that they'll be expensive. But with more common ones, I would say, what how do you pronounce it? Farron, I think is the name yeah, one Farron. that's coming out. It, there's going to probably be figure line for it. Same with how Spy uh, Spy X Family came out. There's a bunch of figures, lower end figures. I won't say increase in value. But no, the higher no, no. end, like 100 to 150 dollars, in a couple of years when they stopped printing them, they did a low run. They'll probably be worth 200, 300. Absolutely. Uh, also, the older Absolutely. ones didn't have the same. Uh, they were made differently. Like, yeah, they were. So I, I recently, if like a few years ago, had um, this whole situation where yeah, a hoarder was selling me their collection. They worked at Suncoast for like years. They had so much stuff, and they had figures from like 2005. And Prior to that, and those were just a different time. Uh, how to tell bootlegs for that? I'm so sorry, I have no idea. A lot of those are going to be really difficult to tell. But I will say, for older figures like that, if you're worried about like, oh, is my Inuyasha figure from 20 years ago a fake? Probably not, because most people who are trying to do this are making fakes of like what he was describing. Nice figures that are coming out in the past three years, like from Spy X Family or shonen that are very recent, like Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen. They are not, they're not targeting your Bell Dandies from All My Goddess from 20 years ago. They're not targeting your, your Inuyashas from 20 years ago. I think that's, that's all we got. Uh, this is our socials. Please look us up. Please follow us. Definitely check out my website. Any questions? Any, any awesome. comments? Just, any just a heads up. Like I said, the Twitch doesn't exist because Twitch is going downhill just right now. Just throwing that out there. So feel free. Follow to this guy YouTube. on Twitch. Shut up. So, <laughs> censor bar off. Come on. Yeah, I, I forgot the censor bar. I'm sorry. Right? Right? Like, you, right now. If you buy a figure, you just want to have to put the censor bars on. <laughs> yeah, look, look that, that, that's a whole different thing. But right now, like this panel right here, this is going to go up on YouTube. So if you want to rewatch it, get information, it's a perfect place. So, and if you have problems find, find, like finding it, I'm here all weekend, I can help you. But please check out Boxing Chan if you want good stuff constantly coming every month. Seriously, check it out on YouTube, ask him questions, we can answer a lot of questions. And we give you full seasons, that's the big thing, I just want to emphasize before we go to questions. Full seasons, so it's not going to be like a part one of five. You'll get the full first season of Reincarnated as a Slime. Yeah, you ever get like a mystery box whatever. and you get like volume three of like Hudacha and you're like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this, right? <laughs> like, I, I made this business because I hated that. <laughs> I was like, I'm so sick of so many boxes for anime stuff that are so bad, so bad. And so it's, I really it's wanted cool. to make something that I myself would buy. It's not going to be like Otaku Box, where they just make up a random figure that never existed. But hey, we have 50,000 of them that we can conveniently throw in this box. It's not going to be like that. They're going to be real figures. Yeah. They're going to be real shows. Real, yeah. And we always tailor to your taste. That's the big thing.
tailored to your taste. And that's all I gotta say. Yeah, any questions? We got, we got a big one over here. Right. What's up? How do you how can you tell if you have something rare? Yeah. Or any you know, video games, manga, anime, or and what should you do if you think you have something that's rare, like a one of or like has like a cool defect or something like that? I'll let you go first. What to do just like if I you think that's rare? Like, oh man, this might be worth you know, worth something or value. Well, so at least for me for anime, um a good example is anyone, if anyone's here, is like the TCG market. Um, I compare what I do with anime with magic a lot because I also uh, carry magic to gathering a lot. Um, the, the amount of time that you have to wait for a turnaround of investment, that's something that people talk about in the stock market for like business terms. Any, any business majors in here? Uh, but you have to, you have to wait. There's a certain amount of time you have to wait for something to occur in value, usually. And that is your time of return. For anime, it is usually, I have found, to be about three to four years. It's a while, I'm not gonna lie. It takes a little bit to like see that value spike, if it's gonna happen. Um, just because uh, usually, especially with newer stuff, um, it's just, there's just more of it. Uh, but it's still nowhere near the amount of production count that is like, like I brought up, like Seinfeld and DVD, or like Family Guy and DVD and Blu-ray. It is nowhere near that amount. So you will see that spike eventually for anime. It might just take that time. That's the major thing that I would think about for that question is how long for this demographic or this product is gonna take? How long do other people state that I have to wait. I think that's something that's really important to look at if you're thinking from a, I'm going to invest in this item and sit on it for a little while. Now with video, now with video games, it, it, it varies. So I'll give a more recent example. There was the Super Mario 20th or 25th anniversary collection where it had Super Mario 64, Sunshine, Galaxy, all on the Switch. They, Nintendo came out and said, we're only doing this for X amount of time. Why did the they do that? longest time, it was $60. Even used, it was like 55 Now all of a sudden, it is $100. Limited run, like limited run prints is a big thing for that. Uh, if they made a lot, but it didn't sell a lot, and then, I don't know, they threw it into a desert and buried it into a trash pile, that also helps you know, carry the value. If they only made a certain amount, or they were doing it on demand prints, kind of like Bong and older NES games, that also bet. It varies, but right now, with the video game market as itself, prices are fluctuating, and I think it's going to be maybe a, if I had to guess, probably a couple other, a couple more years before it kind of stabilizes. There are certain things that have stabilized, but a lot of people have to deal with scalpers right now. But when it comes to seeing, hey, do I have a rare thing? It really comes down to if people like it, if it's a cult classic, if it was limited, like limited print, or I like to kind of say with Flintstones, Flintstones NES is like a two to three hundred dollar NES game, something like that. It's somewhere around there. People liked it, but it didn't sell a lot. Mm -hmm. So it has popularity, but it didn't sell a lot, so it's kind of worth a lot. And then there's repros and all that stuff affecting the market. So with video games, it's a little bit harder, especially as the market keeps fluctuating every day. That that sparks something that I do want to bring up for like if you're collecting anime specifically. Um, there are some of the most valuable and rare anime. Period was from a time when you could only order certain things online. And here's a really good example. Um, a holy grail for anime collecting is specifically Volume 6 for Welcome to the NHK. For anyone that's ever heard of that show, go watch it, by the way, it's very good. Um, that volume specifically, Funimation was like, hey, no one's buying this show, you can only buy this online. You could not get it in stores. So that volume is hundreds of dollars. Extremely expensive, very rare, it's like never on eBay. Um, so like that specific window of time of like mid to late 2000s where they were trying like different like online venues of purchasing. Uh, yeah, those things are really rare. <laughs> Definitely look those things up. But any other questions? Right there in the red. Yes. Yeah, you got it. So 
Is it true that one of the most uh, detailed just went from an authentic to a fake figure from just the box alone is that uh, a lot of the authentic figures tend to have like a little sticker on the uh, thing that's uh, from the logo? Yes. Like, sort of, so that, two things to look for. Um, it is it will always have the label of the production person. So like for you, Snake of Fries, um, Apex, Toei, I. Uh, yeah, exactly. And yes, actually, there is a sticker of authenticity. They will look different depending on where it came from, but there will also be a sticker somewhere. Um, I have found that most fakes don't have it, but I've seen some do. The thing that I always see fakes don't have is the company name, because I'm pretty sure that's like legal stuff. They, they just can't yeah, do that. They can't get around that. They get lawsuits. Yeah. 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 So, so one of the, the examples that I brought up earlier, the QP name thing. Mm -hmm. It has the company printed on there, but it comes down to the box because the box looks like I just went down to the all the office depot and I said, "Hey, put this through the printer room." Like, there's oh, a lot yeah, of boxes yes, that look yeah. like that. It yeah. might have the company logo on it, but if it looks like I went, you know, I went down to the local high school or something, the, the off, ink will always be very dark on fakes uh, because the printers that fakes will use are printers that like that we own at home. Terrible. <laughs> they will, the ink will look really bad. And then right here. Yeah, yeah, because you got the mask on. Go for it. So, um, kind of hijacking this panel. Um, on terms of video game collecting, there is uh, what I would like to call alternative options. Um, especially with consoles. So, one thing to keep in mind. Um, a lot of scrap yards, they do electronics recycling. Yes. What do a lot of people end up throwing out because, oh, they don't know, you know, uh, it doesn't work or we don't need it anymore, we just need to get out of the house. They throw out game consoles. And if you buy them at scrap value, if you are able to, um, you can get stuff for really cheap. I have bought, in, in the past year, I've bought dozens of consoles. I've, I've had, before this weekend, I had about four Xbox 360s, um, four or five Xbox 360s. I actually lost count, but most of them worked. One of them even had the old um, 360 dashboard on it. And it's just, if you're thrifty, if you're willing to maybe repair, because uh, sometimes they are broken, they are you know, need, in need of repair. If you're thrifty, you're willing to repair, or maybe just okay with having you know, a scuffed up console because it's coming from a scrapyard, it is an option. Um, so yeah, just uh, if you're able to, I think it is a good option. Also on another thing, if you get lucky, most craft yards can't take CRT TVs. Um, how many people here know about a Sony Trinitron? Yeah, so you know they go for a lot, right? Uh, what if I told you that because craft yards can't take TVs, I was able to get a later model Sony Trinitron from manufacture date February 2006 has all hooked up some modern TV like a Holy Grail Trinitron for zero dollars because their scrap yard couldn't take it. So that's all I have. And those were those were other important points. They're from the Retro Rally Group. If you want to look yeah. up a local group from North Carolina, they do a lot of stuff in North Carolina. Uh, a lot of vendors come out. They sell retro games and stuff. They there's an event going on March 3rd. But unfortunately, we have to end because it is past our time to wrap up so the next panel can be up here. So if you got any questions, we will be outside in the hallway. Thank you, everyone, to show up. Yeah, we all have a wonderful time. Thank you.